Hi, I'm Hannah, and I'm very excited to formally invite you to support the LGBTQ communities via APIs. My pronouns are she, her, and they, them, and I am the technical community manager at Postman. I have also stewarded uh, other communities and other industries, and I firmly believe that diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI, uh, is a crucial part of genuine community. Uh, without it, you know, you have more of a network with aligned interests. So today I'm going to show you a uh, pride project that we created this June, and I'm going to briefly go over the history of LGBTQ pride, how APIs relate. I'm going to show a demo of a project showing four APIs and I'll explain how to get involved. In June 1969, there was a police raid on the Stonewall Inn. This was a bar that was known for being a safe haven to the LGBTQ community at a time where homosexuality was illegal. These riots were the spark of the modern day queer rights movement, largely led by Marcia P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera um, and several out thousand other demonstrators. And each June, um, Pride is celebrated uh, in many countries in recognition of that initial uprising. And countries like India, sometimes November and December, are other big Pride months. This project, the LGBTQ Pride Workspace, was created uh, in celebration of Pride Month this previous June. So, what do APIs have to do with Pride uh, and LGBTQ rights is a very good question. So. Tech is created by people with biases and values, and it is used by people with biases and values, and therefore it is not a political, it is not neutral. Um, it is a tool that can be used to ends. And we make decisions and have actions and talk based on the information that we have. And APIs deliver data, and we can use that for informed decisions and creating solutions to support one another. I would like to thank uh, Meenakshi Danani and Kevin Swiber, uh, my colleagues who worked hard on this project as well. Kevin was our first contributor after we went live. And I'm going to show you the Pride Public Workspace now. So I'm going to show you the LGBT Pride Postman Public Workspace. A public workspace is a place to share your APIs and collections publicly within the Postman network. And collections are a series of saved API calls. So we've built out collections for four different relevant APIs. First, I'm going to show you the Safe Space Assist Slack bot. The Safe Space Assist Slack bot actually uses the Refuge Restroom Project to find safe bathrooms for LGBTQ folks to use. So you'd enter the Slack bot command and drop it an address. I'm gonna use the Capitol building just to see. Uh, and you can add this proactively to your Slack. And so when coworkers are traveling or just need to find a restroom somewhere, they can go into a channel or the Slack bot and you can see some examples of restrooms that are safe to use. This is done by adding a Slack command. It's connected to a Postman webhook that then runs the Safe Space Assist collection and then posts it to a Slack channel. We used an API that shows LGBTQ opportunities in STEM. So this includes like internships, scholarships. So ThoughtWorks has an internship, for example. There are many, many scholarships. And I took a look at Open States. Open States is a a uh, project that allows you to look at state level legislature within the US. So it shows you what is currently being proposed, who's voting on what, you can track what your local representatives have been voting on and hold them accountable in that way. And so in this collection, in this workspace, I've taken a look at five different pieces of important relevant legislature. So we're gonna take a deeper look into this Washington state bill that was very trans affirming for public schools that was passed in 2019. It's one of the best examples we have so far. So you can go in and you search by jurisdiction. So it shows state in here, uh, Washington, and then you can search by keywords. So I added things like coming out, orientation, sexuality, harassment, public schools, just to see what comes up. And 
you'll get a bunch of results where bills have keywords that connect to it. So we're looking specifically at SB 689. There are several bills that have been called that in Washington state history. And we're gonna grab the bill ID and grab some additional details that way. And so using the bill ID as a parameter, you can also include keywords with things on sources, documents, version. So what was the first draft of this bill? Where is it currently at? Who voted on it? How'd they vote on it? And more information. So you can see in this case that the title of this bill was concerning harassment and intimidation, bullying and discrimination in public schools. Um, all of this and understanding what legislation going on is incredibly important because in just the first three months of 2021 alone, uh, more anti-transgender bills were proposed than entire 2020. So you might've heard of these so-called bathroom bills, for example, and knowing what's going on in your state and your local area is incredibly important and it can be difficult to find information. And so highly recommend using this open states API to understand what's going on. So one of the great things about this workspace is uh, you can actually go ahead and you can fork this collection into your own workspace. Then you can add to it. You can use the collections yourself, make your own calls, um, and you can submit pull requests to contribute to it. So Kevin Swiver, who I previously mentioned, took the human rights data, uh, human rights campaign data on LGBTQ uh, related equality um, information, sorry, equality index um, on a state level as well. And they built out a test script for visualization. So we'll go ahead and press enter on that one and over into visualize. You can see that there's a big graph now looking at each of the different states and how they do from an equality index standpoint on different types of LGBTQ related issues. So I'm currently in Maine, the Northeast is doing pretty well on all of this, but you can take a look over into Oklahoma and Wyoming and you can see what that huge gap there is. You know, marriage equality is going strong, but that is because it's a federal policy and states really do, as you can see, have a big difference in, in states' rights on this. So there are several ways to use these APIs to support communities. One way to do so is to proactively add the Slack bot to your Slack and let people know that you've done so. That means your coworkers don't have to come out and ask for it and it's providing a very inclusive service. Share opportunities with others. If you see them come up, it seems like good scholarships. If you've seen internships, anything like that, or post and add them if you have the ability to do so. And really take a moment and understand what's going on with LGBTQ rights in your area. You have power as a voter to change what's going on. You can see there's a huge, huge discrepancy between states that are doing well on it, um, which still have a long way to go, and states where those rights are nearly non-existent. And so it is a responsibility of ours as citizens to know what's going on and, and support what we really believe in. So you can contribute to this by forking the collections and adding additional information or requests. You can add collections for another API um, and feel free to share it widely. Um, really looking forward to seeing uh, what everyone contributes and uh, please reach out if you have any questions and thanks for listening to this talk.